Well, our final video here in Chapter 3 is a discussion of clustering analysis services. In analysis services, we can cluster the main components, the database engine, right, that, what you think of when you think of SQL Server. We can cluster our agent, that's the job scheduler, uh, among other things. We could do reporting services, our full text search services, cluster aware, and, of course, our friend Mr. Analysis Services can be clustered as well. Now, let me just say this. I'm about to embark on a four or five minute introduction to what clustering is in the SQL Server space. If you already understand that, you might want to kind of skip forward a few minutes. Okay. So a failover cluster allows for automatic recovery in the event of server failure. Okay. So the idea is we have a main server. And if it goes down, we have a backup server that steps into its place and takes over. You might also see this as a high availability cluster. High availability is a really big keyword, right? People get paid a lot of money when they put high availability in their marketing materials. Okay. <laughs> uh, so here's just an example of a basic two node cluster in the Windows and so the SQL Server space. So let's just kind of make some. Uh, Let's talk about some terms and identify some things. So let's just call this guy over here node 1. Each machine is considered a node in the cluster. And that would make this guy node 2. Okay. Uh, down here is the for, for ease of use. We'll just call this the C drive, right? They're local drives that are inside the server. Right, these are probably blade servers, uh, but they're local hard drives to the server. Right? So this is the C drive over here for this one. And what the C drive is going to contain is things like the operating system over here, um, you know, local files. Right? That's what the C drive is going to have. Now, this is your basic Windows cluster, and the cluster will have access to, this is probably your SAN down here, and they'll be plugged into the SAN so that they can take advantage of the disks on the SAN here. Now, when the users want to come into the cluster, what we're actually going to do, what the cluster administrator is going to do, we're going to define what's called a virtual server right here. Okay, so... And I'm going to name that um, SQL Clust. Okay, so the SQL Clust is the name of our virtual server. Okay, now the virtual server is what our clients connect to. Our clients don't connect directly to Node 1 or Node 2. They don't even know that those machines exist. As far as the clients in the world are considering, there is one machine and it's called SQL Clust. It's kind of like cloud computing almost at the network level here. They're connecting to SQL Clust. Behind the scenes, SQL Clust could be two servers or, take a look at this example, it could be four servers. But the clients are still only connecting to SQL Clust. Okay. Now let's bring SQL Server into the mix here. So we have four nodes, uh, and I'll just kind of simplify this. Here's N1 n2, n3, and n4. And here's our SAN down here at the bottom. And let's just call this the D drive. And this has uh, the databases and the logs. And you know, really, you'd probably separate them in different ones. But uh, your D drive, let's just say that, uh, is right here. So we have, uh, let, I'm trying to run out of colors, aren't I? Let me, give me a second. So our virtual server name is SQL Clust, right? So clients come in, they connect to SQL Clust. Now, the way that this is actually going to work, and we're going to go into a little more detail about this in just a second. One of these servers in the cluster is considered the active node. So let's actually make node 1 the active node. That's a harsh, harsh color, isn't it? It's a little less harsh. And that will make the rest of them our passive node. Okay. 
Now, we'll talk about this. I've got several slides here that are going to explain it. But the active node is the one that's actually responding to client requests. The passive nodes are sort of the, hey, if the active node ever goes down, it's my chance, man. <laughs> I'm coming in, OK? That, you know what? This is actually going to be simpler. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it here. Uh, this is fine. Um, so when somebody comes in and they connect to the SQL cluster, it's the active node that they're actually connecting to. The active node actually has the connection, uh, let me get this, directly to the SAN. They're able to serve the data files. And so for SQL Server, that's where the data files will be. Uh, and they're able to connect that. Now, something goes wrong. Okay, so you see these lines in between the servers here? These are what are called the heartbeat cable. And this is a private network in the cluster. And really, it is for acknowledgement requests, or ACKS, A-C-K-S. This is where one of the jobs of each of the passive nodes is to keep tabs on the other nodes in the cluster. So constantly, they are asking this question, hey, are you a live active node? And the active node has to respond within a certain amount of time and say, oh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm over here. Don't worry about me. Take care of yourself, right? Well, eventually, something goes wrong, and the active node doesn't respond, so it crashes, right? Now, we have somebody picks up the slack. OK, well, I was an, a passive node before, but now I become the active node. And so then I take over the responsibility to serve the analysis services databases. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back a page, because there's a very important piece uh, here that we kind of didn't really get to. Remember how, let me get to blue here. I said that you know each of these has a local drive, the C drive, and that it contained the OS and the local files. Well, it also has uh, the SQL Server binaries. Right? This is SQL Server.exe. This is the Analysis Services service. This is the SQL Agent service. The actual files are on the C drive here. Okay. So when this drive, like previously this was N1 and N2, and he was active and he was passive. Well, when this drive crashes, when this server goes down, node 2 now becomes the active node, right? And it starts up that service from its own C drive. In the old days, it used to be that on the shared network, we would have the local services. But they're not on that shared drive anymore. They're now on the local drive. So it actually cranks those up. That's why I have the, the local drives being listed here. Okay. But I'll, I'll go back again to page three. Remember what the definition here. We allow automatic recovery in the event of a server failure. And I can see a typo right there. That should be a, a T. Right? So the event of <laughs> server failure. Did you catch that the first time I went through? Because <laughs> I didn't. I didn't catch it while I was designing it, nor did I catch it the first time I went through the slide. If the main server goes down, a backup server up, steps up and takes over automatically. Okay, we don't have to actually intervene at all. And that's the idea of a failover cluster. And you can replace this term main server. What was that main server called? The active node. And what did we call the backup server? The passive node, right? That's how clustering works. Okay? So that's your two node. We can have a four node. We can even have, I think, an eight node cluster in R2 Windows 2008. So the active node, how many active nodes can there ever be for a cluster? One. All other members of the cluster are passive nodes. Okay? So there can only be one active node per clustered instance. You can have multiple clustered instances of analysis services or SQL as well. Okay? So all the other servers in the instance for that cluster are passive. Passive means they're not responding to the request. They're basically a backup in case the active node goes down. Okay. 
Uh, and this just shows you the same thing. I probably don't need to go through this, right? We had N1 as being active and N2 as passive. And this guy goes down. And let's say it's uh, 30 seconds, 20 seconds here. The heartbeat cable, it sends the passive node, sends the acknowledgement request. Hey, are you awake? Oh, no. He's not responded to me within 20 seconds. Let me send him another. Hey, are you awake? Oh, no. He hasn't responded to me within three seconds or whatever. You get to define the thresholds or your Windows administrators do here. And when that happens, here's what goes down. Um, get my blue coming over here. I become the active node. I start up. Node 2 starts up the analysis services service, and it takes ownership of the clustered, the shared drive down here. And however long it takes for the analysis services service to start up, that's how much downtime that you have. So the amount of downtime we have is really however long that it took before Node 2, the passive node, figured out that the, the active node had failed. So that was what, in our scenario, I think 23 seconds, plus however long it takes to start up the analysis services service. 30 seconds, 5 minutes, depends a lot of times on the size of the database and the number of transactions that have occurred uh, in the database, just like SQL Server. Okay. Now, I mentioned that virtual server. We called that uh, our SQL Clust. Okay. So when you're going through the setup, you're going to define what the virtual server name is for the SQL Server services, right? So we call our SQL Clust, that's what ours was before, and that's what clients connect to. And there's a service, the Microsoft Cluster Service, that interprets, okay, somebody's just tried to connect to SQL Clust, who is the active node? And it does that redirection, that's the active node. So every client request comes into the active node. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, can't I do network load balancing this way? No, right? There's two types of clusters in Windows. There's a failover cluster and a network load balancing cluster. This is a failover cluster. It's not a network load balancing cluster. Does analysis services support network load balancing clusters? You bet, that's what our scale out is going to happen, right? A scale out, let's do this. Uh, so a scale out here is really called a read only scale out deployment. It's going to be different though. It's not a failover cluster. So you're going to have your disks down here. Sorry, I thought I was drawing my little oval down here where you had your, you know, your, your SAN with your shared disks. And so this is your SSAS database and it's read only, right? It's in a read only state. Um, then we've got our separate servers over here, right? So we'll, I'll pick two here because I've run out of real estate. We could be much more than that. And they have hooks into the SAN, right? So that they can work with this particular database. And then somewhere there's some sort of a device here that does our network load balancing. So a network load balancer device. And our clients come in through the network load balancer and it handles the redirection. It says, well, the, uh, let me get that over here. Go to this drive now. The next person comes in and it sends them go to this server now. Okay, and the next one comes in and it sends them to this server and the next one comes in. I'm running out of colors and it sends them to this server and that yellow doesn't show up. But that's a separate device that's not part of analysis services itself. If you're going to do clustering with analysis services, it is failover clustering. Okay? A read-only scale-out deployment requires some other type of uh, network load balancing, not a network load balancing cluster. Uh, you know, as far as requirements go, we'll just kind of finish out with this. The basics here, uh, get your Windows cluster in place first. So you've got to have Enterprise or Data Center. Uh, the only additions of SQL Server are Data Center, Enterprise, Standard, and Developer that support clustering. You know, make sure your hardware is on the HCL. Uh, the cluster setup itself is pretty much a next, next, next finish. 
The only things you have to decide are what the addresses are. Uh, so like the idea of the private network, that's for the heartbeat cables so that the node 2 can challenge node 1 or vice versa. The passive nodes can challenge the active node to determine failure. You've got to decide the virtual server name, what will your uh, clients connect, and which nodes will play what roles. Okay. Uh, but it's pretty simple. Get the Windows cluster in place first. Uh, one thing has changed. Uh, if you've done your cluster in SQL Server 2005, it's a little different in 2008. Uh, you actually have to go to each node that you want to be part of the cluster in 2008, and you have to run through the installation. Uh, so go start it at the active node, put the installation media in, step three, go through the install and choose to install a single node cluster. See, that's what's different about 2008 versus 2005. Once you're finished with that installation, take the DVD or the installation media, go to the passive nodes, and now go to add the server to a cluster. And you can actually see, I took screen caps of both the SQL Server 2008 and the R2 installation. So this is just the setup program. Notice, see if I can get them both on the same screen. The top one is 2008, the bottom is R2. Uh, so step number three, and then step four. And the, the rest of the screens are really, hey, what, uh, what's the private IP? What's the public IP? What do you want to name the cluster? Okay. Pretty simple to get that in place, I think. Okay. All right. A uh, couple of final things. The service packs are cluster aware. Uh, they will patch the entire cluster, all the nodes of the cluster. Uh, I would definitely suggest you get with your SAN vendor uh, on this. They'll have some suggestions for where to put the quorum disks, and they'll, they'll have some good ideas for you. Uh, generally speaking, we try to make everything have identical hardware. Uh, it just makes it easy. And I put some uh, really great articles in here. My favorite one is the top one. That it's a fantastic walkthrough of installing uh, SQL Server clusters. Um, just remember that some of the 2005 material is similar yet different. Okay, so just look out for that. Again, open the PDF and there you'll have these links in there. And that's it for Chapter 3.